How you doing YouTube? Back with another Infinite Flight video. This video will be covering flight planning based on the recent update that included uh, the user interface improvements, the changes to the map with the uh, Dash 8. So we're strictly going to be on the map. Um, I'll try to cover as much as possible. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, I am at Chicago. I have the recording set up so that my gestures are going to be recorded so you can at least see where I'm pressing. I've already highlighted um, our, uh, our terminal that we're at, which is uh, Chicago O'Hare. Um, one of the things I normally would do when I'm doing a flight plan is I would split my screen so that I could see uh, distances and things like that. Um, but I think with this one, I think it does it automatically. So we're going to go ahead and do the first one. So we tap on O'Hare and we would select it. And then we would tap on our first waypoint. And what I would do is I would go to the end of the runway. If there was a waypoint there and I would select that. And there is in this case, and so I would add that in. Um, then I would select a waypoint that is off the runway and a straight off, um, a straight out heading, and I would select it. Maybe uh, this one it says it's Yonut or Ikuya. I would select it, and where I would be pressing, if you see this D with the arrow through it that means direct if you select that what's gonna happen is this line you selected from KORD to this first run uh, runway waypoint it will disappear and a new line is going to show up from KORD out to Akuya so you don't want to select that direct route um, that D with the arrow through it it would be like you would select KORD and then go to another airport such as uh, General Mitchell up here in Wisconsin select the KMKE and then select that and hit the that D with the arrow through it and it stands for direct and it would set up a straight line point to point for travel um, just so that you can see it, uh, let's go ahead and do it. So I'll select KORD and then I will select K Mike and bam, point to point, just like that. You see that? And if you come down here and look, my, my line from KORD to the end of the uh, runway has disappeared but we don't want that uh, for this particular um, video so we're gonna go ahead and get started selecting KORD and that dot that's there the next one you see the circle with the plus sign in it that means add and then we'll go to Akuya and we will select that. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and um, fly north to um, General Mitchell. So what we would do is just go ahead and start turning. Um, I'm in solo mode, so where we're flying to, it doesn't really uh, matter. We'll set up a VOR. Uh, we'll use Northbrook and add that in. And if you look at the split screen with the map and the flight plan, it's just adding in. So what ends up happening as you're flying and you come to those uh, waypoints, what will happen is it'll tell you the direction to get to that uh, waypoint, the heading. It'll tell you the distance to that head to that waypoint and nautical miles and it'll tell you how long 
before you get to the heading, but it'll keep it running for each waypoint and VOR that you have selected for your particular flight. So we're going to be setting this up so that we come to 25, yeah, 25 left at General Mitchell. So we're at this waypoint. So what we would do, you know, and the thing is, what I would do when I'm flying solo, I would try to use as little waypoints as necessary so that my flight isn't all uh, long and drawn out with uh, unnecessary uh, changes. So I just added in that waypoint there. I can't tell the name of it. Not really important. And then I would come and add this Jansen. And then I would start making my turn onto my final. And then open the map up some and select the waypoint to the runway and the last one would be the General Mitchell Tower and then I would select it. And so what ends up happening let's say you're in the Airbus A320 uh, that has the um, the automatic pilot landing um, when you select that tower on any plane of course you can lock in your particular uh, runway so that it's not changing as you're flying and also uh, as you come in and you are within the parameters for the automatic pilot you can go ahead and set that so now we can go ahead and zoom out and we can see our flight plan that we've just set up and see and the thing is there are um, infinite number of flight plans that you can set up doing that same thing but I just don't want the map to intimidate you so there we have the uh, of map set up so that we have the flight plan uh, represented so that we can keep track of our our direction distance and our estimate time of arrival on the left and this map will track the plane as we're flying and then at the very top if you want to you can just have your flight plan as well as extra telemetry I typically as I'm flying I will keep this the screen split um, just so that you know uh, if you're flying on line let's see you want to know what's going on at General Mitchell because I'm not flying online right now it says no weather if I just tap on this black bar like there it'll go ahead and it will give me information on General Mitchell right here you can see it it'll tell me that it's 723 feet above sea level in the class uh, airport that it is for the uh, um, particular airport it'll tell me what the weather is in this case is not applicable because we are not online and then it'll give me runway information so that I know that the plane that I'm getting ready to land has enough room uh, to go ahead and come to uh, a stop and so that's what you would need to know in order to make a flight plan with the new update that you have available uh, with this uh, map. Um, you also have the option to hide things and I don't hide anything. I actually keep all of this stuff active. It's pointless to have your flight plan and then get rid of the information. Um, the other thing, if you happen to make a mistake during the course of doing your flight plan, this uh, minus sign that's next to activate leg, you can clear that particular mistake out and then make your correction. If you're flying and you're coming to a turn and you want to go ahead and activate 
the next turn, that activate leg, that's exactly what that means. A point, uh, uh, the straight line between one waypoint and another waypoint is, is, is what's referred to as a leg. Um, let's go to, <clears throat> this is the last thing. Um, I don't want the video to get too long. This is the last thing I want to talk to you about. If we go to our cockpit view here, uh, if you look down in the lower bar, you see how I have my telemetry set up. From left to right, I have flight time, local time, estimated time to next, that means the next waypoint, bearing to the next waypoint, the distance to the next waypoint, the estimated time to my destination, and my distance to my destination. These things only work because of the flight plan that I have set up. The most important out of all of these is the one that I have in the middle, which is the bearing to the next. What you will notice, the compass says 104, but the bearing to the next waypoint says, I think that says 282. When they make these changes, some of the numbers are really hard to read. But the reason why it's important is because as you're flying, you may need to make course corrections. And having that bearing to next set up right in the middle under the compass ensures that they match. They must match. Your, and it's more important that your compass heading is matching your bearing to the next. This is for when you're flying solo. Of course, when you're flying online, you may be getting commands from air traffic control to tell you to make turns that are um, that are in conflict with your flight plan. But that may be only to get you to capture the um, uh, the glide slope so that you can come in for a landing. Uh, that's all I have for you with this particular video. I would tell you just take your time and you should be able to master the new map that they have. I really uh, like it. It's very intuitive. The only thing I wish is that um, I don't know if it's just device specific. I have a tablet that I'm um, flying on. It's actually a Galaxy Tab 3. And when the changes were made, the one thing that happened that I do not like is that all of the letters and the numbers, sh they shrank. Um, but that's all I have for you. And uh, please uh, feel free to comment. You can email me. And please uh, give my video a thumbs up. Thank you.